Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. This is the second time that we come before you in this magic place. In review, this is indeed a crystalline magic node. And the message today, the second one in the series of four, is complex. And so we go slow. There are many of you here that are not necessarily interested in the minutia, have not necessarily heard the other messages. Maybe it's the first time that you've sat in this energy of channeling. And so I address you first. Dear ones, this is an opportunity for you to feel the love of spirit. The creative source is here. And without any words at all, you can feel the love and the compassion for you. There is no agenda. You can sit in this energy and have a healing, if you wish, on your own. There's no instructions. There's nothing to do. Some others are very invested in the information and want more. They want to know the minutia. What is it about the crystalline energy? What's going on on the planet? How does it fit with your life? It's a complex channel. It doesn't have to be. But the bias of humanity that is simplistic often creates a puzzle when there doesn't have to be one. So let us start with a premise and develop it. The premise is this. You are here on a physical crystal node. The mountain underneath you contains far more than even the geologists suspect. It goes down to dig to deep. Too deep to dig. <laughs> I said that because it's an upside down mountain. <laughs> and so it would surprise even those who are the experts how much is here. And it affects the planet. It affects the planet especially metaphysically. But this is physical. And the attributes of the physical quartz crystal we will speak more of in just a moment. The second thing we discuss, which is totally and completely apart from the physical, is the crystalline grid of the planet. That is not physical. It is completely esoteric. It is an energetic grid that is named crystalline because of its attribute of remembering. So let us separate those now and forever in the discussion. The quartz crystal that you look at, that you mine, that you're working with today, that we speak of as the node itself, is physical. The crystalline grid of the planet is not. It's invisible, but we call it the crystalline grid because of the attributes of remembrance. So let's come back to the physical for just a moment. I want you to look at some things that are interesting from the beginning of time. You like crystals, don't you? And we said it yesterday, but let's enhance. Every time a crystal, a quartz crystal, is pulled out of the ground, and every time 
that there is an energy worker who feels something, it's benevolent every single time. How many billions of crystals are there on this planet? Taken home so that those can enjoy them. Surrounding them in perhaps every room of their house if they're sensitive. Why would you do this? And the answer is because every single crystal, if it talks to you, if you feel its energy, it's benevolent. You never dig a crystal out of the ground and it comes up and goes, there's doom ahead. <laughs> what are the odds? What are the odds of a, a geological phenomenon that grows in the ground over time and that you pick up as a human being that gives you benevolence. <laughs> There's something going on here. It cannot be a fluke of nature. You never go to a crystal shop where they organize the crystals according to good and bad, dark and light, doom and joy. Every single crystal, no matter what type it is or the attributes it might have that are geological, is benevolent. It sings to you. Some talk to you. Some just sit there and you want to meditate around them because it makes you feel good or it tempers the energy so you can do a better job. Think of this. In the last few years, you've even started to categorize the crystals metaphysically. Have you heard of the Lemurian crystal? Now according to the steward of the land, a Lemurian crystal is not a geological denotation. It's an energetic one. And isn't it interesting the name that you chose? Lemurian crystal. Why that? And the reason, dear ones, is because an energy worker, an old soul, even though they may disagree what and where Lemuria was, it is a concept of original beginnings. So humanity is even starting to awaken to a new potential of what the crystals are trying to say. A Lemurian crystal, by the way, is identifiable, according to the steward of the land, by that which is physical. And yet it is an esoteric designation. You're getting close to understanding a bit more about what they're trying to say to you. All of them are benevolent, every single one, from the smallest to the largest. In a few moments, many of you will get into a vehicle and go to that where the dig is, where you're allowed to walk around, where you're allowed to actually relate to them in the ground. This is special. You will find some. You might actually put some back. Why would you do that? And the answer is, some have different messages. Some have different owners. How about that? Do they ally then with the consciousness of an individual human being? Now, do I have to tell you yes or no to a group like this? They call to you. There are a lot more crystals than there are humans. <laughs> and so many can call in specific ways. It's a delightful idea. It's what brings you here. It what puts a smile on your face when you look at them. That's the crystal that is physical. I want you to remember these attributes now as we talk about the ones that are not physical that are what we call the crystalline grid attributes. 
And then we're going to describe the relationship between the physical node here and the esoteric invisible, which is the grid of the planet called crystalline. Remember, one is physical, one is not. What is the crystalline grid? We have taught it, we have described it, but here in this node is where it all comes together. I want to give you a story so you really understand what the crystalline grid is for and what it does and how it works. Imagine in this very land, imagine a battle. Often it's brother against brother. It's the Civil War. Imagine that you are in this war and you are a soldier and you're not a warrior. You're probably a farmer. You're handed a weapon, you represent an idea. You put on the battlefield, give it a uniform that probably doesn't fit. Some of you get shoes, some of you don't. Right away in the battle, the bullet finds its mark and you know you are mortally wounded. You fall to the dirt. I want to tell you something. All men and women, they die differently. But there's one thing you have in common in those last moments of death. You forget the battle. You don't care who wins. You feel the blood leaving, the life force is going, and it's true what they say. That the soul and the brain cooperate to slow things down for a moment or two. And the thing you think about is not the battle and you, your ears don't hear anymore. My partner's relating. Your ears don't hear the noise of the battle, the shouts and the groans and the guns. And instead you hear your mother. And love takes over. No matter what they say in the last moments of death, love and compassion win. And even though you're hurting, even though your mouth might be moaning, your soul and your brain are going over. The smile of your mother, of your brothers and your sisters, perhaps of your partner. There's drama there. The death that occurs and then all is quiet. And on these battlefields of this civil war, there are tens of thousands of these stories. Now I want to ask you something, human being, right now, today, some of you have walked into those battlefields because they have been preserved as monuments of what put this country in an attitude that it has today. And if you're a sensitive and you walked into that battlefield, question, did you feel anything? And some of you say, oh yeah. Some of you were uncomfortable because your Akash is starting to reveal things. Some of you who didn't have an experience there felt it anyway. Question, for you to ponder what's going on that you would feel anything at all. Did the dirt have a memory? Did it play back? Did you hit a button? Did you see a video? And the answer is actually yes. That's what the crystalline grid does. It remembers the most dramatic things in history that have happened. It's not just in the battlefields. I'm speaking of what you would call 
the American continent right here, right now. I would like to talk about that. Brian, why don't you ever talk about the indigenous of the areas in America? I will tell you something. First of all, there weren't that many. Second of all, they were allied with the land. They knew Gaia. Before they confronted that which was the European influence, they were at home with Gaia. There wasn't a lot of drama. <laughs> the crystalline grid was almost neutral. They knew about the, the energies of the ancestors of the north, the south, the east, the west. No, we're talking about you. I want to talk about your lineage. Women, listen. Because this is in your Akash. If you're here as an American, this is in your Akash. Listen. Imagine a journey that might have lasted years. Where you go from east to west. And where it's so common that you would have children that you lose. It was so common that you lost more children than you kept. And they would either die at birth when you were either alone or with help or shortly thereafter. Did you know that the women walked alongside the wagons? They didn't ride. The wagons needed to be stalked with things. You knew that, didn't you? Everyone who made the trip walked. The women had it especially tough. Whereas the childbearing, and they didn't stop. As the childbearing, you lost too many. I'd like to tell you the land is covered with little burial grounds that have no names. It was so common, women, you didn't even name the child until it was three months old. Because you didn't know whether you got to keep it. That's in your Akash. That's in the crystalline grid of this land. Now, what does this tell you? Several things. Number one, the land has memory. That's the crystalline grid. If you look at this worldwide, what has defined humanity as you know it today? And the answer is war, suffering, and drama. That's what has defined. It's defined you. It's defined Europe, South America, everywhere. Where everyone is and the languages they speak, it's all due to war. The most profound things you feel as you walk around has to do with suffering. And dear ones, that is the remembering of the crystalline grid. Now the grid did not create suffering. It just remembers it. And that is the function of the grid, to echo human nature, to provide a lineage of remembrance, to feed the Akash. And this is why we have always said that which consciousness does stays on the planet. Suddenly, suddenly, you have a shift. And the shift that you have in 2012 is the one that was given by almost all of the ancients of the planet. And suddenly this node becomes active. This node is physical. And what did I tell you about the crystals? They're benevolent. There's a reason. They have been waiting all over this planet. They give you messages that you enjoy, that you feel, and suddenly they've got a big message because they are beginning to fast track the invisible grid with benevolent information that is going to temper all of the suffering, all of the war, and start rewriting the crystalline grid. I'll tell you what the messages are for those who are sensitive enough to listen, understand a crystal in front of you. 
in its beauty, in its transparency. The message is difficult. It's the rewriting of the future. Rewriting of the future. It starts to tell you about a future that you don't know. We'll call it future history. Because almost every single old soul carries a bias of remembrance that says you're doomed. Look at your movies. You're doomed. All of the storytellers, the best stories that come out are ones that you have because you're doomed. It talks about the aftermath of war. Show me the movies, the stories, the books that talk about a new planet that has no war. About the puzzles that might be there of the benevolence, of the compassion, of the beauty. They're nowhere yet. But they will be. Because when the grid has been rewritten by this node you're sitting on, and the fast track that's coming, your crystals are going to start talking to you and they're going to say, you have no idea where you're going. It's beautiful. Rewrite that which you consider is your, is your future. Listen, this is so powerful that precogs, those who sense the future, are still sensing an old future. And repeated, they will give you information that says this is awful and it's going to happen and this is awful and it's going to happen. They're just picking up what was, not what is. And that's why this node is working the way it is. One more thing. Many Americans, not the natives, the ones that came, in the last 200 years, many of them say, we have really no ancestors. Dear Crying, how can we honor the ancestors when we don't really have any? We're from everywhere. Let me redefine your ancestors, American. The ones in the battlefield. The mothers walking alongside the wagons. The families who didn't make it, the ones who did. You can have ancestors that are only 200 years old. Those are your ancestors. Those are the ones who shaped the grid and the remembrance that you have. One of the most controversial things that I can tell you in closing is that these episodes on the invisible crystalline grid have so much impact to a sensitive, even to non-sensitives, that if something unusually tragic happens in a home, that particular energy will stay there quite often, even after the home has been destroyed. You call it ghosts. It's a playback system of the crystalline grid. On a certain date, a certain time, a certain frequency, you can measure it. Instruments will see it. Sometimes you will. The difference between a ghost and what you might call something else that has energy is that this particular episode you cannot interface with. It doesn't talk to you. It simply plays out and plays out and plays out. Nobody's trapped. There are no entities there. It's an esoteric video. <laughs> and you can count on it. You can set up your instruments and your cameras and capture it. That's the crystalline grid. By the way, when it comes to things that go bump in the night, you have no idea what you're seeing. None. Humans categorize them all into one thing. Unusual. Some of them are our physics. Some of them are normal. There'll come a time when you laugh at yourselves for being afraid of something. It was beautiful. <laughs> and then you'll understand someday 
when you can see multidimensional things exactly what's going on. That's how powerful the crystalline grid is. Dear Cryon, are you telling me that when you rewrite this grid from this node that even those things may change? And the answer is they will. You're going to start seeing it. Hauntings that are no more. Energies that can no longer be felt where tragic things happen, where people died. Flowers that grow where flowers never grew before. The sun comes out in dark places. This is the prediction of the planet past 2012. It's the reason for this place. It's always been here waiting. The message to you specifically rewrite your future now the crystals in your home and all around you aren't just benevolent the message is clear do you have a doom bias clean it up because you're not going to you're not going to get to that future yet that is there when you're always expecting the other shoe to drop when you're always expecting something bad What is your bias about your life? What's the bias about your age? All of this can be rewritten. And this is the place that'll do it. <laughs> if you're able to go to the dig today, listen. Or there'll be some talking to you more than just take me home they'll say ah we've waited millions of years for you take me home it's a little different and so it is <laughs>